Killing Eve. When is it going to end? When watching this show, I noticed that both series were based on the Villanelle novels by Luke Jennings, but upon further research, I found that there have only been two instalments by the author, with a third being released in 2020. The first season already covers much more than the first book, the second book reportedly diverges from the events we've seen on TV, and the third book claims that it will bring the story to a close. So, whilst there may be an existing, concrete ending to Killing Eve, it still raises the question of just how far the BBC are willing to drag this premise out for, seeing that the novels and the show are fairly loosely connected. It also makes it easy to see how Season 2 was already in danger of stumbling along without a clue of where it was going, with Emerald Fennel replacing Phoebe Waller-Bridge as showrunner, and with the continued question of how long this cat-and-mouse chase could go on for, I was fairly sceptical when going into this latest series. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that it actually began strongly, with Villanelle being stripped to nothing after being stabbed by Eve and struggling to get back to her feet. We were introduced to a new assassin, the Ghost, and a rich psychopath, Aaron Peel, who was selling weaponizing data to the highest buyers and ordering the deaths of his father and his associates. Both these new plotlines had the potential to have engaging threads throughout the series, but neither of them seemed confident enough to have a satisfying conclusion, which brought the last episode down as a weak finale. About halfway through season two, when things started getting a bit stupid, I thought that the most sensible way the show could end would be with Eve dying, as it is called Killing Eve, after all. This would be sensible, as it would show the result of Eve becoming too confident with Villanelle, forgetting her psychopathic traits, and losing fear of her. In essence, that is the outcome we got, but her death was so sudden that it would be a completely unworthy way to end this main character's journey. So of course there's going to be a third season. The finale left me with such an unsatisfying aftertaste from all the loose plot threads that it didn't surprise me at all to discover that BBC had renewed the show a mere 12 hours after season 2 was released on iPlayer. What continues to bewilder me about Killing Eve is that the Twelve are yet to make a grand appearance in the fall. It's all very well them staying quiet and mysterious throughout both seasons, but the fact that we don't seem any closer to fully understanding the Twelve since the show started has made them much less threatening as the big villain. Ironically, the first book actually opens with the group meeting and deciding on their next victim, something both Wallabridge and Fennel should have adopted by now. But perhaps a reason for the Twelve's absence is that Wallabridge felt that an appearance in the first series was too soon, and Fennel didn't know how to, with everything else she had planned to fit into Season 2. And with the announcement of Season 3 came the reveal that Suzanne Heathcote will be replacing Fennel as showrunner. This is now supposedly the tradition that each new season of Killing Eve will get a new head writer. Wallabridge has suggested that giving other female voices a chance to tell the story is a really cool thing to do. Yeah, it would be a cool thing to do if the show wasn't so dependent on its overarching plot. If Killing Eve had a floating timeline, or if each season was a collection of individual stories that could be watched out of order, then Wallabridge would have a point here. But the show isn't in that form. The episodes are chapters and should be watched in chronological order. I just don't get why the BBC are shooting themselves in the foot here. They're risking losing older plot lines amongst new ones introduced with each new take of the story, like what we've already seen happen with the Twelve. And with a growing plethora of plots, the chances of fulfilling conclusions to each of them are risked to becoming minimised to nothing. I mean, who knows, maybe the show will never end. Maybe we'll be stuck in a cycle with each new writer introducing new stories, forgetting about the old ones, then not knowing how to finish them effectively, end the series on a cliffhanger just to leave it up to the next writer to deal with. So whilst I may come across as very critical about this show, it's only because there's a lot about it which remains to be excellent. The acting from both Jodie Comer and Sandra Oh has been exquisite throughout, and season two retained its aesthetically pleasing directing style, as well as plenty of gripping edge-of-the-seat moments. I also find it incredible how, as an audience member, my perspective of Villanelle was twisted and turned throughout this series. It felt so strange to be rooting for the assassin in those first two episodes. However, this season did take a step further away from reality in terms of its plausibility, and it lacked the confidence to properly explain everything that was going on. 
I will watch season three, but if it fails to conclude itself appropriately, then there'll be every more reason to believe that this is a one season wonder kind of show. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to leave a like and comment what your thoughts are about Killing Eve and when you think it will actually come to a close. Thanks again. Goodbye.